Hey, this is Bert. I'm here to welcome you to part two of my little series on every character that's in the sail barge and the sand skiffs. This installment of No Skill, No Skill Customs. No Skill, No Skill Customs. We're going to start things off with the Sarlacc Pit itself. This was available in the Ultimate Sarlacc Pit Battle Pack from Target. And it has a cool feature for those of you purists out there who don't like the mouth thing that was added in the special edition. The mouthpiece is removable. I should also mention the skiff itself. This is called simply the Tatooine Skiff, released this year in 2019. You totally need it. It's a great improvement over the, the vintage and 90s skiffs, which were all built using the same mold. Not as rickety, longer, it holds more figures. It has an amazing deco, and you can make it tilt like this for when the, the sand skiffs get shot. You can take off the railing and swap it off for a busted railing and have, uh, have Han and Lando hanging over the side. So it's really just an amazing, amazing toy and after that that brings us to the barge itself first shot of the interior of the barge is r2d2 wheeling around his tray of i'm guessing alcoholic beverages this r2d2 here vintage collection number 25 and i actually use him three times in my uh in my displays and i'll tell you about that in a little bit next person you see you just see his jacket is the quilted jacket of Voltazane. You can see like a little bit of the furry sleeves that he has. They have never made a figure of this. Next up, you see Woof. He's the guy that we used to call Klaatu as kids. Vintage Collection 24. And after that, we see Reese. His best version is the Vintage Collection number 137 that came with the Jabba's Palace playset. But that's really hard to find. Um, and actually, I don't even have it. This What you're seeing right here is the Black Series version. And they, they're almost indistinguishable. I just feel like the paint on the Vintage Collection one is just a wee bit better. Next up is Rake Riger. No figure for him, unfortunately. After that, we have Yoxkit, a, an Ugnaught character in, all in red. Again, no figure of Yoxkit. Pretty disappointing. Uh, after that, you can just barely see on the right-hand side of the screen the back of our good friend. He used to be called Elon when I was a kid in some coloring book or something. But now he's known as Tannis Spyjack. And uh, his figure is available in the Saga Collection, the Phase 3. After that, another hairy friend walks by, and that's nothing other than Jaquiel. Jaquiel is also from Phase 3. And then we see Max Rebo playing some music. Max Rebo here is available in uh, two different places that I know of. The Power of the Force um, Max Rebo Band Pairs set. And then also in 2007, Walmart made the Max Rebo Band Jabba's Palace Musicians set. Rocking to the beat behind Max Rebo is Tessic. Poor Tessic hasn't seen an update in 20 years as he is a Power of the Jedi era figure. Next, we have Bosk. Bosk was available in the Imperial Forces 3-pack and then also in the Vintage Original Trilogy Collection. Really nice figure there. Next interior shot brings us to Jabba's other bartender droid and uh, this one doesn't have a name he was available in an entertainment earth six pack and and in that six pack he's just called Jabba's bartender so I'm gonna fix that right now I'm naming him R2BZ R2BZ I made it up just go with it next up of course is Jabba himself and if you have the sail barge well then you have Jabba the Hutt Okay, if you don't have the sail barge and you're just going to do like your own little setup, the next best place to get Jabba the Hutt would be in the, in the Toys R Us Jabba's Rancor Pit Pack. Next, we have two Jawas. Okay, they've never actually made these exact two Jawas. One is named Snip Nikik. Maybe the end silent. Snip Kick? I don't know. And then the other one's name is Heret. I use this Jawa, the shorter of the two from the Jawas 2-pack from the Black Series. Number 20. Okay, there's lots of Jawas to choose from. Just about any of them are going to look fine. I just felt like his belts looked looked most like the one in the movie. And then I chose this other one. This this Jawa is from the Legacy Build-A-Droid 
39 Jawa and Security Droid pack. Okay, another hard to find one, but what's really great about this figure is that he can bend at the legs and sit. Okay, if you notice the Jawas, one is sitting and the other one is jumping up and trying to sit uh, during this scene. And he's the only one that really can sit and look natural. He's got the fabric bottom half of his outfit. Then we have Bib Fortuna. And I gotta say, I'm, I know this is going to be another controversial one. Unfortunately, Bib Fortuna has only been made in the Saga collection. They've never made him since in the modern era. Uh, but I actually like this other non-action figure. Okay, and let's be honest here. The Saga collection, Bib Fortuna, is not really much of an action figure either. He moves at his elbows, and I suppose, like, if you tried really hard, you could move his head. I kind of like this figure. Okay, don't hate me. It's the uh, it's from the Disney Return of the Jedi figurine playset, Bib Fortuna. He's scaled about exactly the same, and I just feel like his uh, likeness is more the feel that I have when I uh, see Bib Fortuna. Okay, next up, Garen Nest Hall. Okay, he's a Soren, like the little guys you saw in the cantina scene in A New Hope. Never made a figure. This is one of my most wanted figures right here. Next up is Sh Shasa Teal, an Ishi Tib character. Again, another one without a figure. When, I, when they made Ishi Tib way back in the day, in the Power of the Force 2 era, I thought it was this guy. But no, this guy wears a totally different outfit. And that guy is actually a hero. He's actually a good guy in the Rebel Alliance. Next up, another guy we really need to see. Nizuk Beck. He is, he's seen a couple times on the sail barge. He's probably best known as being the guy whose gun gets stolen by Luke right as uh, Jabba sends Luke to the Rancor pit. Next interior shot brings us to Princess Leia. And uh, you got a couple options here as well. Actually, I, I couldn't even tell you which, which I chose. Um, the Vintage Collection number 88 Sandstorm outfit princess leia and the vintage collection number 64 slave outfit uh princess leia their words not mine i would just call her Jabba's prisoner um those figures are both practically identical but i know there's some subtle differences to to uh the handling of the hair and the lips but i i gotta tell you it's been so long i can't remember which one this is there's also a lego legacy collection version if you want to have the extra legs so she can be sitting down she never actually lies down like that. That's only in the, the palace that she lies down kind of sideways. Next up is this red guy walks by with bandolier straps crossing his chest. Another character without a name. So I'm calling him Dranyam Trebor. Dranyam Trebor. He's best seen in Jabba's palace right after it's revealed that there's all these uh, um, bad guys right behind Leia and Han. Uh, he kind of walks in down the, these stairs that are right there. Next up after that is Gizem. He's a like a snaggletooth character. Also one I really want to see done. Actually, okay, I'll be honest. I, they need to make all these guys. Uh, after that, Fozek. Fozek can be seen more easily in the palace, but uh, he's seen here where he gets the drink spilled on him. You need a C-3PO. Now, some people would suggest the, the C-3PO from the 30th anniversary collection because his eye gets poked out, but, I mean, that doesn't happen until the very end. Plus, my other problem with that is he's got the green gook all over him, which he doesn't really have on him on the barge. That's only in the palace. So I chose uh, the Saga-era C-3PO, Saga number 42, C-3PO with Ewok Throne, they call him. And then you also see one of at least two Gambrian guards. I've read things that say there's nine. I've never seen more than one in any frame of this film. So uh, so there's obviously one above deck and one below deck. And you can imagine how many others there are. And that's up to you. Um, in the the literature that's been out there, um, the two, Gambrian, two of the Gambrian guards that are aboard Jabba's sail barge have names Ragua and Ortug. Obviously for each of those I'd use Vintage Collection number 21. It's a great figure. Uh, really one of the, the best figures Hasbro's ever made actually. With this figure though you see I have a different staff. I'm using actually Han Solo's staff uh, from the Saga Collection because that's what he uses. It's up on top deck. Um, next up 
is nice side and he just barely shows up here you can just see the tip of his head um, right as C-3PO says this place is dangerous so he was known as Nikto Gunner so if you're looking for the figure of him don't look up nice side because uh, they did not use that um, so he's legacy collection BD-23 and he's just called Nikto Gunner when C-3PO grabs the microphone um, you see you see uh, Volta Zane again you see Arden Vapor Corell and you see this balding guy with some fabric draped over his shoulders. And I named this character Relum Turb. Next up, C-3PO's talking from outside, and you can see poking through a window is another uh, Weequay character with the, uh, the red and blue vest on. Now, there's actually two characters that wear this exact same outfit, so I'm pretending uh, in my own mind that they're brothers. I made that up, okay? Don't quote me on that unless it becomes official. And that's why they wear the same outfit, because because their mom dresses them like that. I don't know. In reality, I'm guessing they just used the same stuntman twice, and they figured that no one was going to pause the movie over and over and over again and notice that they used the same exact outfit twice. This guy has never been named and has never had a figure. So I'm naming him Ebom Livim. And then his brother, when he shows up above deck, is named Malish Livim. Next, believe it or not, we've gone all this way, 48 characters in, and we finally get to the man, Boba Fett. Okay, and you can see in this scene, he's just about figuring out that R2-D2 is up to something, but doesn't really react, unfortunately, for him. I use the vintage original trilogy collection version of Boba Fett. He's been remade a couple times as a, a Legends character. And then above deck, when everything starts going crazy, I use the, the Saga collection version of Boba Fett where he's got the flames sticking out of his backpack. Next after that, you see Klaatu. Not Woof, Klaatu. And he's hanging around in the top deck of the sail barge looking down at everybody. He uh, he shows up a little bit more later on. The way to get his figure, Vintage Collection number 135. Then I go to Vintage Collection 25 again, R2-D2. That same figure that was the bartender also has a feature where you can pop a lightsaber out of his head. That brings us to a lot of commotion on the, the sand skiffs and Vism, Vintage Collection 153 shows up. He's also available in the Black Series and personally I actually feel like the Black Series one is better because the Black Series one has a darker wash on his pads and his face and his legs. And the Vintage Collection one that came in the Vintage Collection 3 pack recently, his shoulder pads are really really yellow when they're really supposed to be gray so those are those are my two issues with the vintage collection one but hey if you don't have the black series one the vintage collection one will do just fine and then princess leia knocks out the lights and that's the best time that we see selt Murray. he might have shown up earlier but i i didn't really see him next up we get to salacious crumb you can get him as part of the 30th anniversary collection salacious crumb with c-3po figure set or you can get the Shadows of the Dark Side Jabba's Throne set. And that's where this particular one is from. It's got a better mouth paint job, but really it's so the difference is so subtle that um, if you don't already have that set and that, that Salacious Crumb, the other one will do just fine. Then, then uh, like I mentioned, here's the C-3PO with removable eye. And here's the third time that I use the VC-25 R2-D2 so he can defend C-3PO from Salacious Crumb with his little zapper. Okay, and then, then we go back up on top. And this one, this name I'm very proud of. You got um, Klaatu and this other guy, another human, which is why there's no figure of him. They attack Luke, and the human and Klaatu, they both turn away and run. And that reminded me of uh, one of my favorite characters from one of my favorite movies, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Brave Sir Robin. So I fooled around with his name and spun it around and made this guy's name Nibor Rizivarb, which I love. Okay, next up, there's a barge gunner who's barely seen. Uh, there's a couple good shots of him in uh, behind the scenes stuff, but he doesn't really uh, show up too much in this scene. 
and he's about to get beat up by Princess Leia, and there's a lot of photos that show her beating him up. Um, and he kind of looks like he's got like a winter hat on. I named this guy Fire Potsig. Again, just making up a cool name there. Uh, Fire Potsig. No figure for him yet, unfortunately. So that's uh, another one with no figure. Then Tame Dren Garen. The last, the last character really to show up that hasn't appeared anywhere else during this scene. Um, he is actually in Jabba's Palace, if you look really closely. He's like in charge of the barbecue. And he, unfortunately, does not have a figure at either. One of my, one of my uh, most wanted lists. Now let's get to the characters that everyone thought were on the barge that aren't. Okay, first is, I always thought Beto was on the barge. They never made a figure of him, but, you, but I had been using Greedo. Found out he, he actually just is not on the barge. Ifant Mon, not on the barge. But, you know what, you've got this whole other little compartment that we don't get to see during the movie. This is where you can toss all those guys. Bane Malar, not really in the movie at all, actually. It's uh, another guy's outfit with uh, a, a helmet that's not seen anywhere in the movie. Dengar actually does not show up on the sail barge. You'd think he'd be there to see Han Solo die, since all those legend stories tell us about how much he hates Han Solo. Then we have Yarna, not on the barge. Amanaman, not on the barge. But all these guys really make sense there. Now, Cy Snoodles, this is a controversial one. I could not locate her in the movie, but there's this uh, beautiful picture of her kissing Nizet Beck on the barge. So, so at some point, the puppet was at least there, even if she did not show up on film. Bubo. Not on the barge. And Droopy McCool, I expected to be there. I mean, really, most of these guys, I just thought they were there my whole life, and I couldn't spot them. Not on the barge. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I hope it helps you uh, fill some holes in your collection if you're missing some of these figures. Once again, this has been Bert from No Skill Customs. Please like and subscribe and do all that fun stuff, and check out our next video coming up soon.